Good morning and welcome to Shall We Have the Funny Voice? Fun Day Morning! Yes, hello. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Some of you may be coming along to church later for the Pentecost service. Some of you may be watching this on catch up and may have been at the church service already. Whichever, happy Pentecost to you. May you know today that God's Spirit is with you. Let's begin, as we always do, with getting warmed up. Are you in this? Whether you are or not, join in with the actions or just dance around. Two, Lord, I lift your name on high. La, la. So how's your week been, all of you? What about you, Nick? Yeah, my week's been quite exciting. I became an uncle again to not one, but two nephews, twins. How exciting is that? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Very exciting. But yeah, my week in general has been quite busy, so I'm quite tired now, to be honest. Maybe you need to lie down and have a nap on one of these. You sent us some brilliant beds for our gallery. Have a look.
some great beds and some fab ideas. I have to say that some of them look more comfortable than others. <laughs> Time for another song now, I think. Yes, it's Pentecost. We heard the story a few weeks ago of how the gift that God promised finally came after a lot of waiting. The Holy Spirit, God with us every step. Let's sing the song that tells us that. Remember the actions? With me, God is with me. Yes, he's with me every step. I know God is with me every step I go. I know God is with me every step. Great. And then the words change, but the actions stay the same. So with you every step. And then finally, with us every step. And the chorus, oh, the love of God is with me every day, every step I take. And he will lead me on into his perfect plan, walking hand in hand every step. What an amazing action that is, hand in hand. Let's sing every step.
it was good to sing that again. It seems quite a long time since we last did it. <laughs> now, Nick, a question for you. Do you know what your name means? Yes, in fact, I do. My name, Nick, comes from Nicholas, which means victory people or victory to people. What about your name? What does Kate mean? It means pure. And we found out that Lydia is the name of a place and a woman in the Bible. Yep. And Roger, get this one, means famous spear. How cool. <laughs> What about you at home? Do you know what your name means? We'll stop for a moment so that you can ask your grown up. you find out there may need to be some googling done later. <laughs> Often when parents choose a name for their new baby it's because of the meaning of that name. Yes we call Joseph Joseph because it means God has given a son. Nice and if parents call their child a name that means say kind they all hope that their child does grow up to be, what do you think, kind. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> now, if parents were to call their child a name that means is good and does things right, what would they be hoping that this child would behave like as he grew up? Hmm? And how would they feel if what he became was actually a liar and a cheat. Yeah, and how would he feel not living up to his name? And how would other people feel about him? It's time now for our story. Zacchaeus. His name means good and does things right. He lived in a town called Jericho. He worked for the government for the tax department. Tax is money that people pay to the government so that the government can afford to run the country. You've probably heard your grown-ups talk about tax. Zacchaeus' job was to collect the taxes from people and give the tax money to the government. He was a tax collector. Now, in Bible times, tax collectors often took too much money from people. It was cheating and it wasn't fair. And the tax collectors often kept this extra money for themselves. So it was like stealing. This is what Zacchaeus did in his job. And it gets worse. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. He was in charge of other tax collectors who cheated and who stole. Is he being like his name? Is he doing things right? No, not at all. Do you think people liked Zacchaeus? No, me neither. Everybody knew that he behaved badly. Everybody knew that he was mean. And everybody knew that he always put himself first and didn't care for other people. So do you think he had any friends? No. Do you think anybody wanted to spend time with him or come to tea with him? No, me neither. There's one more thing that you need to know about Zacchaeus. He was short, he was a little man, and that's important for our story. On the day when our story takes place, Jesus was traveling through Jericho, through Zacchaeus's town. And we know about Jesus. 
He said amazing things and did such wonderful things that people followed him. Everywhere he went, people wanted to hear him and they wanted to see him. Crowds of people. Zacchaeus wanted to see him too. Can you think what the problem might be? Crowds of people and one little man. Yes, he couldn't see Jesus because the people were in the way. And because they didn't like Zacchaeus, they weren't going to make room for him or let him through. He stretched as tall as he could and it wasn't tall enough. He stood on his tiptoes and it was no good. He still couldn't see. He needed a plan quickly. This might be his only chance to see Jesus. Remember, Jesus was only passing through Jericho on this one day. And then an idea. He would run on ahead and he would climb a tree and then he would look down from the tree and have a good view of Jesus. So Zacchaeus ran and he climbed. Can you spot him hiding up in this big sycamore tree? Along came the crowd of people and there was Jesus in the crowd. He was coming closer and closer to the tree where Zacchaeus was, hiding in the branches. And then a very strange thing happened. Jesus stopped right under the sycamore tree. Jesus looked up and he called out. He called out to Zacchaeus by his name. Zacchaeus, he called. Quick, come down from the tree. I'm coming to your house for tea. Down came Zacchaeus as quickly as he could and took Jesus back to his house. He could hardly believe that Jesus had noticed him and he was so excited that Jesus wanted to come to his house. But the crowd, they were angry. <coughs> Doesn't Jesus know what this little man is like, they grumbled. Everyone knows that Zacchaeus is mean. He cheats and he steals. Jesus shouldn't be having tea with such a mean man. And Jesus? He wasn't bothered by what all the grumbling people were saying. Jesus loved Zacchaeus and he knew that Zacchaeus really wanted to be like his name. Zacchaeus didn't want to be a thief and a cheat. He wanted to change the, his ways and do things the right way. He wanted to do things God's way. I'm going to give away half of all my money, he said to Jesus. I'll give it to the poor and all the people I've cheated. I'm going to pay them back. Not just what I stole from them, but four times as much. How glad Jesus was. And Jesus said, I've come so that people can change their ways. Your life was wrong and now it's right. And now it's right. Like the meaning of his name. Exactly. Let's sing a wonderful song of praise to God. Please join in and follow along with everyone's coming to praise. And don't forget, God be glorified. Coming to praise, joining together to honor your name. Jesus is Lord, we will sing of everything. Everyone's coming to praise, showing the world it is Jesus who reigns. He is the light and the way of everything. to lift up your voice to our God, for He reigns. 
before we hear about our activity, let's do some chat and catch praying. Kate, would you lead us? Yes, of course. Okay, you're at home, you know how to do this. Close your eyes and make yourselves comfortable. Why don't you start by telling God how you're feeling today? Tell him what you're going to do later. I wonder, have you ever felt left out of things like Zacchaeus? Tell God. Ask him how he felt about that and catch what he says. Now, how about asking him to tell you if there's anyone who hasn't got friends someone that you could be a friend to. It may be that somebody's name or what they look like just pops into your mind. Do that now. God loves you and he knows your name. In the Bible, God says, I've made you, I've called you by name. You are mine. I wonder how that makes you feel. Thank you, God, that you made us, you see us, you know us, and you love us. Whatever our names are, may we live our lives for you. Amen. Amen. When I think that God made me and I belong to him, I feel safe and good. Mm, yes, that's a good feeling. So, what's next? Ah, oh, yes, this week's activity. Yes, in the story, Jesus had never met Zacchaeus before, but he knew his name and he loved him so much. Jesus knows your name and he loves you. Write your name in whatever way you want and decorate it. Use colours or paints or chalks. What about collage? Could you make your name out of letter tiles? Could you make it out of Lego? Are you uh, gonna try biscuits again, Kate? <laughs> I don't think that would quite work. <laughs> I wonder if I could make it out of spaghetti? <gasps> I know, strawberry laces. Ah, do you like strawberry laces? Well, no, not particularly. I'll tell you who does though, Heidi who sings for us in a couple of our songs. She loves strawberry laces. <laughs> when she and Joseph got married, they had strawberry laces as one of the things to eat at their wedding reception. Wow, that sounds like a good wedding reception. <laughs> and strawberry laces certainly might work for this. However, you guys at home choose to make your name. Take a picture and send it to us. We'd love to see it. Yes, we can't wait to see them. And we can't wait to see you again, maybe even later at church. But for now, bye-bye.